young people with interest in your own country as well as uh, in, in, with interest to hear different opinions. This is the right approach. Uh, let me say a few words about me. Uh, I decided to spend more of my time lately on China, on studying and finding out what's happening in China these days. Why I decided to do so, for very obvious reasons, is that development of China these days uh, will influence very strongly my own region. I'm from Central Asia, which is bordering China uh, in your northwest provinces. It was for hundreds and thousands of years that we are the neighbors. And indeed, maybe many of you remember that once in the Middle Ages, Central Asia was the most prosperous region of the world, with all science, education, cultural, scientific inventories happened in Central Asia. And the fundamental reason for this dynamism was that at that time, Central Asia connected China, Asia, and Europe through the trade route. And uh, because of development of maritime routes and uh, industrial revolutions, Central Asia slowly lost its influence in the world. These days, you cannot see weather forecast for Central Asia in famous CNN or BBC. It's like it doesn't exist. The reason why Central Asia went into crisis is that we are a landlocked region. In your country, you have your own understanding of landlocked region, like Xinjiang area. And the problem with landlocked region is that it's not easy to make trade and business in that area. Just a few numbers. In landlocked countries, there is only 7% of world population is living. Only 7%. 80% of world GDP generated from the coastal area, only 100 kilometers from the seashores. It's clearly show that uh, to make logistics, to make trade, economic activity, it's much easier in an area which have attachment to the sea. That is why four years ago when we heard in Central Asia when President, President of China launching, launch this initiative of new Silk Road, we were very enthusiastic. And what's happening now is that we really wanted to give all kind of advice to China on how to make things better, on how not to make things which will be harming this idea, but how to move things even quicker than it can be done. So for Central Asia, this is not a matter of either or, it's a matter of either development or perhaps stagnation. This is the first statement, so we are very much interested in the success of this initiative. If we move back into China, like our moderator said, do we know our own country, asking Chinese uh, audience. Uh, actually, what's happening these days is just returning to so-called old good times. Uh, modern historians and economists reasonably well describing this, the status of the world uh, during the last 20 centuries. And only one and a half centuries, starting approximately from 1842 with the Opium War, China lost its world superiority. It was just a little tiny uh, time when China became not number one in the world, but uh, slides into the stagnation. Uh, by the way, it's very interesting to analyze why it happened suddenly, and China 
uh, not anymore be, uh, was the economy number one. So 18 and a half century, China already was super, su super economy of the world. But suddenly from 32% of world GDP, it slided to less than 5%. What China is saying to outside world through this initiative is that let's work together. The world is globalized and interconnected. Why don't we debate what should be the world order? Why China is making this statement? Because of two obvious reasons. First, its own growth, as I mentioned. Second is that current global governance uh, model is in crisis. Let's say it openly. Uh, and the reason for that is that politics and politicians in many areas around the world cannot last long last solution. They created isolationism between the countries for the reason is that uh, developed advanced economies world they're losing competitiveness economic competitiveness and short-term solution for uh, avoiding some social disturbance in the own world is making protection steps it's very dangerous situation which could lead into the spiral of downturn trajectories. So the world now cannot solve as a whole real global problems, being it pandemics, being migration crisis, climate challenges. It can be done only together. But the world, if you look for the dyna dynamic of couple of last years, getting more isolated. What China is saying that let's not do it. Let's unite. You get united and let's decide and solve these problems together. It's an interconnected world. And let's force industrial revolution bring to the all human beings and mankind fruits of its real, uh, uh, real development. This is what happening and that is what Belt and Road Initiative is about. It's ideological umbrella under which China is going to be big internationally. As its economy, its status, its future prospects dictating to be. And uh, good things about that, that is invitation. So China don't want to create supply-driven approach for the development of the world. China is saying we want to listen different voices around the world and based on the different opinion to provide model of harmonious future development of the mankind. But with that, I see some challenges. So we as the friends of China wanted to see where you will get challenges along this new way of uh, your own ideas on how to be international. Belt and Road Initiative will be difficult to implement. The easiest part, I would say, what is happening now when China is making so-called uh, hard approach for Belt and Road. They're saying we will build roads, tunnels, pipelines and will make life of people there easier. We will increase economic cooperation, there will be more trade, more development, more harmonious relationship. But it's easiest part of general leadership which China would demonstrate. The most complicated part would be this soft approach, soft power, not hard power. How to learn on the customs and traditions of different people, people to people, person to person, how to understand different mentality of the world, how to try to generate demand-driven approach from the countries and the region which will be involved in this process. This is, will be much more difficult. Not because it's 
also uh, difficult for everyone. For China, it will be especially difficult. Why? Internal market of China is big enough. All along the history, your country was internally oriented. You're not really moved outside aggressive way. You just united a couple of kingdoms around your country, and then you prosperously live all those generations and centuries. If you look to your characteristic as a nation, you have your unique language, characters, cuisine, way of communicating. You not really try to export your customs abroad. You always tend to look inwards. Now it is time to go big international way. And this will be difficult. It will be difficult having in mind your own DNA and so-called genetic tradition of being internally oriented nation, which is not bad. Appreciate your own tradition, your own customs, your own history. Now, all world is waiting for kind of recommendations which you're going to give them and uh, how you're going to implement it. Here, we need so-called soft power approach. And this is where challenges will come when China would become economy number one of the world and people will see to you with, with the questions, with the expectations, what leader will tell us to do. Tunnels, yes. Roads, yes. Pipelines, yes. But this is only the easiest part of all story and leadership would require much more of soft power. But debates, what I'm hearing lately in your country when you're inviting wise people around the world, when you try to absorb recommendations and advice from their side, it's a very right approach. We are only in the beginning of a long and winding road. We are here, I'm from Central Asia, willing very much to give you best possible advice and sometimes looking from outside with different mentality, with different history, with different uh, education, backgrounds, tradition, culture, education, much easier to give you with the condition that these people should be sincere, sincerely and frankly give you a right piece of advice for prosperity. Sharing world, 21st century, the middle of horse and rust revolutions, revolution with all these challenges around the world, uh, bring more weight to the shoulders of your country. You next steps you will take in, it's not only for your own people, for your own country, it's for people around the world. Leadership, that is a very big weight which people from your country will carry for many, many dozens of years and centuries uh, in the future. And we are, for all outside world, will be with you for ac when you will accept and lead world to the better future. Thank you.